Today, we're going to talk about the riskiest commander investments in Rise of Kingdoms, where you try to avoid having skills, land on the ones that you don't want, and get them all to land in just the perfect configuration. Stick around in this video for the very best commanders to be using your precious skill resets on to get perfect skill configurations. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and with the addition of the skill reset item into the game, we finally have a way to gamble to get the perfect configuration of skills on a commander. And this is super relevant for commanders that have a skill that's just not useful most of the time for most players. Like, for example, on Guan Yu, the second skills for hitting garrisons, most people are just going to use them in the field. So in a perfect world, you'd end up with a 5-1-1. 5-5 five, five configuration on your Guan Yu. This is the sort of thing that we're going to be talking about today where you use the least number of sculptures possible to get a perfect outcome with a commander. And we're going to use skill resets to get that job done. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides designed to help you get value and smash your enemies, then smash that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? This is day three of Commander Week. Yesterday, we talked about the best 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one legendaries. The day before, we talked about the best 5-5-5-1 five, 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 legendaries, saving you sculptures, and it's day three, where we're saving you sculptures yet again to get serious value by strategically using that skill reset item, where you can reallocate the skills and hope they land in just the right places. Now, in this video, of course, we've got timestamps in the description, so you can jump to whatever portion of the video you're most interested in. We're going to give you the top three risky investments where I think the payout is totally worth it if you can get lucky, and we'll talk about exactly how lucky you need to be to get these outcomes that are just amazing. By the way, a huge thank you to BYG Pi. The mathematician that is my go-to, I guess I should say the statistician, who is my go-to for breaking down the math on all of this stuff and making sure that I got it right, because actually he did all the math here and helped explain to me exactly how that works, so thank you, and yep, we'll have the odds in this video. Speaking of the odds, why don't we start by just breaking down exactly how lucky you need to be to get one of these amazing configurations. There are three configurations we're going to talk about today with skills where you're not going to max the commander, but you're going to get some sick value. The first configuration, and I'll use Guan Yu as the example, is the 5-1-5-5, five, 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 maxing the first skill, the third skill, and the fourth skill. Now, your chances of this are actually better than any other configuration we're going to talk about today. And all of the math for how this works, the, the odds, at the end of the video, because it's actually pretty complicated. But there is a 7% chance every time you go in and you deploy your skills that you will end up with a 5-1-5-5 five, five, five configuration on a commander, assuming that you max the first skill and then unlock the last Three. Now, 7%, that's not really a great chance here, right? That is more likely than navigating an asteroid field and less likely than just showing up, crafting a legendary, and getting the special talent the very first time that you craft it, okay? And I know you might be thinking, but Chiskul, I go on the internet and I see pictures all the time of people who say, I crafted my first legendary and look, I got special talent. And that is, I think, called survivorship bias, where, like, of course you would see that. Everybody else who didn't make it, who didn't get a special talent on their first legendary craft, probably didn't post about it. So all you see is people posting all the time, look at me, my first legendary special talent. This is not me being bitter. I'm just talking about the psychology of this, although I am bitter. I'm like two for 28 on legendary special talents. All I'm saying is that you're more likely to get a special talent on a legendary than you are to land on a 5155 five, five legendary configuration. With that said, skill resets give you a free way to try again. And again, and again, for long, as long as you have those skill resets. Now, there's not really a great way to obtain these skill resets, by the way. So this is why it's a pretty risky gamble. You can't spend gems to get them, at least today. So you've got to get them from events, and hopefully they'll bring more of those back. So the next configuration I want to talk about that 
you might really be thinking about, and I'll, I'll point out a commander I talked about yesterday, Artemisia, an amazing 5515 five, legendary. If you wanted to take her to 5515, five, five, maxing the final skill but skipping the garrison related third skill, very understandable. The odds here are even worse. Your odds are, I guess it's only slightly worse, but it is a 1 in 16 uh, odds. That is a 6.25% chance that when you go in and you max the first skill, max the second skill, and then unlock the last two, that every skill up will land right over here in the fourth skill. The final configuration that I want to talk about for a commander where I, I pointed out that they would be amazing, except uh, there's really no way to do this without getting insanely lucky, is Tamaris with a 5-1-1-5 configuration. It'd be totally gangbuster. This is very unlikely to happen. A 5-1-1-5. That is a 1 in 81 chance, 1.2%. Okay? So that means one person out of every 81 who attempts this is going to end up with a 5-1-1-5 Tamaris. Don't try that. It's not going to work, <laughs> okay? 80 people will not have this work, and then one person will successfully pull this off. So I just wanted to mention the odds at the start because they're not good. But skill reset items make this way more achievable. You get a bunch of chances. And if you're open to the idea of having a couple skills land in the wrong place, for instance, if you had... Let's say you're working on Guan, okay? And you had a 5-2, five, 5-5. Five, five. That's still really good. You're still really lucky with a 5-2, five, 5-5 five, five Guan. Yes, you have spent more sculptures, okay? Uh, it's only 310 more sculptures to expertise if you had a 5-1-1-5. One, one, five. Okay, you're spending 75 more sculptures than you would have otherwise if you could have got the perfect configuration, but you're still more lucky okay, than the average person would be, and you're saving sculptures in the expertise skill, in a lot of cases, if you're using many marches, isn't going to do all that much for you. Similarly, if you had um, two skill ups go in the wrong place, so you had a 5-3-5-5, five, 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 you're still more lucky than average, but not by nearly as much. You would be slightly lucky in that instance. So if you're going through and you're applying your skills and it's like a five, three, uh, you know, whatever, whatever on the last two before you've maxed it out. You've been slightly lucky, but you probably want to reset that to try again, depending on how many resets you have left. And just to remind everyone of what's at stake if you do this right, it's only 200 sculptures to make a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one legendary. It's an additional 190 to have a 5-5-1-5 five, five, one, five, legendary. So it's a grand total of 390 sculptures, which is way less than the 700 needed to expertise. That's what's at stake in this video. Okay. So let's talk about the honorable mentions commanders that like, I think that either the payoff is not enough, or I just have to think you've got some other commander you would prioritize over doing one of these commanders. And um, the honorable mentions for this list, let's start with Attila. <laughs> Attila is an honorable mention because the second skill is garrison related. You could use Attila as a 5155. I don't think I would recommend it though. I don't think most players should be going for Attila necessarily in this day and age. I think it'd be a cool thing to do on your way to expertising him, but I don't think it's worthy of skill resets. Worthy of the mention because a 5155 Attila would actually be pretty legit, but I think the expertise skill is good enough that you probably just want to go for that anyways. So he makes not the top three that we'll share with you, but an honorable mention. Also, I want to put Nebuchadnezzar in that category of an honorable mention. A 5515 five, Nebu is actually super good. This last skill, we talked about it yesterday as a 5511 one commander. He's a little disappointing because the final skill over here is really good and the baseline value is so bad. 3% uh, damage boost for the march and a chance to reduce the rage of the enemy by 20. It's not amazing. But if you could get a 5-5-1-5 five, five, five Nebu, keep in mind, again, that's a 6.25% chance every time you try this that you'll pull it off. It's unlikely, but if you could max that last skill, it actually would be really quite strong. He would be significantly stronger. I mean, 
12% more damage is just really, really good. And a chance to reduce the rage of the enemy by an additional 80 whenever that ability triggers is really good. Worthy of an honorable mention. Probably not someone you would be gambling on unless you've maxed the other commanders that are in our top three list, which we'll talk about in a bit or you're not interested in them. But let's go to the final honorable mention, which is going to be Xiang Yu. And this is a very strong commander that you might just want to leave at 5510. Also, we talked about that in our video yesterday. However, if you could max that final skill for the same reason as Nabu, it's just so much better in its final form, reducing your rage requirement by 50 and also going in and making it so you get a 5% damage boost every time you get a stack or basically use an active skill. You get double the stacks when you're being surrounded. That is way, way better, way better than its baseline state to the point that I almost think you shouldn't even unlock it because there's a march speed reduction that comes with this ability. So I gave him an honorable mention. A 5515 saying you would be pretty sick. It'd be pretty good. Uh, but you probably could just leave him at 5-5, five, five, I think, and get a lot of the value you were hunting for anyways. The other reason that I'm giving him an honorable mention, and maybe he should even be like number three or number four on my list, is that if you actually unlock this last skill, you can make him the primary commander. That might honestly be enough reason to make him kind of number four on the list here. If you could get that, he can be the primary commander, and then you're in a pretty good spot because his active skill actually has a 100 rage reduction uh, from the baseline value of other primary skills. It's 900 instead of 1,000. So we might consider this guy kind of number four on the list. He's actually pretty strong in that 5515 situation. 6.25% chance of making that happen. And again, if you don't mind this skill being a two, right? If you have uh, 75 extra sculptures to commit, it's still a pretty good outcome. And you're still lucky well beyond the average. Let's get into the number three commander on the list, and that is going to be Harold. Now, this is a commander players might not have expected me to put on this list as I struggle to find him in my commander list. However, the weirdness of Harold, and the reason I say most players should just go for the expertise skill on him, is that he is going to be reducing your defense dramatically over the course of the fight. And his fourth skill will offset that defense reduction temporarily. He kind of shrugs it off. He ignores the defense reduction that is applied to him for about three seconds. He is immune to all defense reduction effects. The effects will still be applied to him, but they have no effect on him. They don't take place. So he shrugs off those defense effects. They're still there. They don't do anything to him. And that is very, very strong. You have to have this skill maxed, in my opinion, in order to really be able to use Herald. Otherwise, you are just going to have your defense drop and you are going to get wrecked. And this helps you deal with the fact that your defense is getting dropped off really steeply and in a way that's kind of stacking up and stacking up. And so you kind of have to max that skill to use this commander. If you could get him to 5155, you're basically ignoring the garrison related skill and ignoring the expertise skill, which only does something if you're actually being surrounded, then I think Harold would be a pretty legit commander to use. But I have to caution you that although Harold seems pretty decent in the open field now, I actually question his long-term value in Rise of Kingdoms. I'm a little bit afraid that unless they release a commander that will pair really nicely with him in the future, that because he doesn't really do area of effect damage proactively, like if you're swarming him, he'll do some AoE damage. But if you're swarming him, he's probably going to die anyways. So he kind of does a lot of extra damage on his way out, which I don't love. I prefer commanders that are doing more damage aggressively, offensively, up front, right? Must answer threats. And you can kind of ignore Harold. It's kind of uh, almost correct to ignore Harold until he's got a bunch of those defense reduction stacks and then just like, boom, you swarm him out in the blink of an eye. I'm very concerned about Harold's long-term value in Rise of Kingdoms, although his value now is fine. And if you got to that 5155 state, 7% 7 chance of that happening, he'd be pretty good. And if it was 5255, five, he'd still be pretty good. Although, you know, at that point, you might be thinking, should I go all the way to the expertise? Maybe, maybe you should. Let's go to the number two commander on our list here for risky investments, worthy of skill resets, where you go and you reset over and over until you get the right configuration. 
And that is going to be Guan Yu. Number two on my list, because Guan Yu is a very, very strong commander. The expertise skill, pff, I mean, most players won't get value from it, really. If you're battling with multiple marches in the open field, you will rarely be jumping from resource nodes to resource nodes. It, it's just unlikely to happen. You're unlikely to be getting shields in a way that's uh, at all synchronized with your active skill. So you're probably not getting any value from the 15% da skill damage boost for three seconds after receiving a shield. Some people will say, we'll just put the lucky coin on him. But if your Guan is getting focused, I mean, lucky coin is not going to stop you from getting racked. I mean, at that point, it's basically kind of game over for your march anyways. He's a glass cannon. He can't take hits very well. So unless you're pairing with Leonidas, I feel like you're not going to get a ton of value from this expertise skill. And if you are pairing with Leonidas, keep that in mind. The expertise skill is more relevant. So this is, I think, a great candidate to 5155 because he's just going to get the majority of what he's going to do for you all in his kit there. Okay, number two on my list, 7% chance of making that happen. Odds are a little bit better if you're comfortable with a 5-2, five, 5-5 five, five outcome. But if you have enough skill resets, I don't know. I mean, you still got to get pretty lucky at 7%. The final commander that if you could pull this off, gosh darn, she is my number one risky investment. For the amount of sculptures it would take to do this, it's kind of incredible. That will be a 5155 Tamaris. The thing that's so gangbuster about Tamaris is that her final skill is going to apply a stacking poison effect, making the target take extra skill damage for every stack that applies. It's 3% per stack, and you can get 15 stacks on the target. That is 45% more skill damage taken to the target. When you see Tamaris debuffs show up on targets in big group fights, those targets melt really, really fast. If you could end up with a 5-1-1-5 Tamaris, she would do some serious work. Now, there's a 1 in 81 chance of making that happen. That's 1.2%. But you can see I've already gotten very lucky with my Tamaris. I have a 5-1-3-3. You could work your way towards a 5-1-X, how, however many, you don't really care, the more the merrier over here, but try to get to this skill maxed, and if they land, end up, really land over here, it's kind of fine, right? That is a strong, strong position to have a Tamaris in, and you'd have to pair her with probably Artemisia, who, good news, if you saw my video yesterday, it only takes 200 sculptures to get a 5-5-1-1 Tamaris, that is like got to be one of the strongest low sculpture investment marches that I can possibly imagine. I mean, the only thing that might be closer is some stuff with Leonidas, maybe a Guan Leonidas. But I'm jumping ahead to what we're going to talk about in tomorrow's video. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and throwing a like on here for more Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. And for those of you who were interested in... A little bit of the statistics around why it is that a 5155 is actually more likely than a 5515. We could talk about the math just very, very briefly. The reason the math is so complicated for figuring out the chance of getting this situation of a 5155 is that it depends on the order in which these two skills get maxed. Because you see, until one of these skills gets maxed, there's a two-thirds chance that the skill ends up where you want, right? If it ends up here, that's a win. If it ends up here, that's a win. If it ends up over here, well, you lose. So two-thirds chance. But once one of these skills gets maxed, then it's a 50-50 chance for the remaining skill ups to end up where you want. So it was actually some really complicated math to figure out the chance of getting a 5155 uh, configuration. So again, thank you to BYGPI who did that math. And then I looked at it and asked a couple questions until I kind of understood. Much appreciated. We're all thankful for you're doing all that crazy statistics. The math behind a 5515 is a lot easier to understand. So if I look at Artemisia real quick, there's basically a 50% chance every time you apply one of those last two skill ups that it ends up over here. So it's one over two times one over two, times one over two, times one over two, basically four times. You need to win the 50-50 coin flip. 
So that's why that's easy to understand as 1 over 16. That's a 6.25% chance. And, you know, the odds are way lower on that Tamaris that we were talking about earlier. Okay, that is going to be a one-third flip that you have to win four times in a row. So to end up with that 5-1-1-5 Tamaris, right, you need to get the one-third pick. Your skill lands here and not here or here. So a one-third chance. So one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third. Four times you got to land over here. That's how you get that 1.2%. If you found this video helpful or you learned something, even about math, statistics, probability, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. We're out of here. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.